In May of 05, uh, I went out and interviewed with the Southern Baptist to be an army chaplain. Uh, and I was coming back from the interview and I was struck by those people mover golf cart things. There was two of them racing side by side and I was struck in the airport by it. And one of them ran over my low back and I blew out every disc from L3 to S2, which is from about two inches above my hip all the way to my tailbone. Ah, oh, that is painful. And the pain was instant and overwhelming. I'm Eric Singer, Gazette.com. 25 years ago, President George H.W. Bush signed into law the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA. Communities across the U.S., including Colorado Springs and El Paso County, are required to make such things as sidewalks and buildings accessible to those with disabilities. The disabled community tells the Gazette a legal loophole is making it tough for them to get around. What we've learned in Stephen Hobbs' special assignment, Breaking Down Barriers. My front end is lifting up, and I, because it's such a steep grade and these little bumps that it's very hard, hard to get up. I can do it, but it's extremely difficult. Uh, I couldn't stand up straight. I couldn't walk for a long time, several years. I couldn't even drive for over a year. You're supposed to have a level landing pad at the top and the bottom of every ramp, and you're supposed to have the ramp be a straight direction. So when you're going up this ramp, you have to turn. And if you notice, this wheel just lifted right off the ground. Here in this town is Rocky Mountain ADA Center, which is paid for by a federal grant. It covers the whole Rocky Mountain region. It's right here as a resource for them, and they don't make use of it. Again, I've got so much speed. If I have to stop, I'm in trouble. Ah, shoot. And I almost went into that. And then you gotta try to get across these cobblestones. Dave May's angry on this 25th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA. These cobblestones um, are extremely painful. They're hard to navigate. You get stuck in them with your wheelchair. This is all uphill right here. There's a scrade. In order to get into this building, this is a temporary setup. And I do it this way, most people don't. But when it rains and snows, the chair gets wet and dirty. And if I put it up this high, it's out of the spray. Look at this. You can tell he's already, I don't know him, but you can already tell he's winded. And he's just trying to get around. But the one thing we want to see is accessibility for people. It's required by law. Uh, we pay taxes to this community, and we want to have equality of access and equality of treatment. Look at this. Leads to stairs. See that? Mm -hmm. So you have to go around that staircase. There's no, if you go around it, there's stairs on the other side too. So you can't gain access to that part of the building at all? No, you, well, you can't gain access down here. Here's just one of many roads that Dave showed us. This is on Woodman near North Academy, heading east. And look what it ends in, a gravel pit. <laughs> I mean, you're stuck, okay? Once you cross over here, you got the bridge, so you really can't go anywhere. You really can't cross over Academy you can't, cr you can't get across that on Academy and Wood. Maybe you, you, you're stuck, okay, mm -hmm. on this side. On the other side, there's some hills and things like that, but even that's an issue. An issue affecting more than the estimated 66,571 disabled, like Dave, who live in El Paso County. And we need to remember this is so much bigger than just people who use wheelchairs. It's walkers, it's people in high heels, it's seniors, uh, and, and it, that's why it's just so critical and important. I'm sympathetic. I've been out to some areas and I've seen some stuff that hasn't been done right, but it's really hard for a city to manage. Killebrew oversees ADA compliance in Colorado Springs, city buildings, parks, and services. He is the first full-time coordinator to oversee ADA compliance in these areas since the law was passed. We're in the process of becoming ADA compliant based on my experience and knowledge, yes. It seems like there's a lot of technical requirements and this idea that you know, business owners or architects are doing the best they can, they're trying to provide an accessible route. You know, there's a lot of new requirements that come out. It's hard to keep up with. It is not difficult. And I mean, I think that that assumption is, is so unfortunate because these requirements are so straightforward. I'm, I'm not an architect and I can understand them without any problem. 
Compliance is doing it right the first time and following the correct ADA requirements. Enforcement is checking buildings to see if they're ADA compliant and accessible. Because the ADA is civil rights law, the federal government and building experts created advisory codes to ensure the disabled were not discriminated against. Local governments are not allowed to enforce the law on behalf of the feds. Pikes Peak Regional Building oversees building permits for Colorado Springs, El Paso County, Fountain, Manitou Springs, Monument, Green Mountain Falls, and Palmer Lake. The seven municipalities who are the, the bosses for regional building have agreed for some reason that their responsibility is only up until that five foot perimeter. According to the Regional Building Code, the department is only required to check the outside of a building within five feet of its entrance. Outside of five feet, building owners and design professionals are required to meet the ADA standards. We have not been given the authority to go beyond the five foot, simply put. Uh, the five foot, I believe, comes from, five foot is a minimum length for a landing at a ramp. So I believe that it was set at five foot to establish a minimum landing length outside a, a door and then the uh, individual jurisdiction takes it from there. But the contractor and the architect and the design professionals involved in the project are responsible for that compliance as well. The building code is not a maintenance code. So once a building is constructed and a certificate of occupancy is issued, then the building department's no longer involved in the, in the process. We don't do maintenance inspections. That's not, that's not part of the building code. But what has happened is there has been this false assumption that because regional building is checking everything, that they must be ensuring also that the ADA is being complied with. Do you feel like having this is setting businesses up for failure? That's not, we're part of the, we're part of the community. Um, I don't believe that we're setting anybody up for failure, but we can only go so far. We only have so many abilities and we don't have the authority to go beyond that five foot point. It could be considered, but there needs to be a stakeholder process and there's a lot involved in, in that type of change. Including a decision by the seven governments and Pikes Peak Regional Building to change the code. And changing that, just even that one code, oh, kind yeah. of in your opinion, yeah. would have a major Absolutely. impact. Absolutely, I mean, if you think about it, we have to bring on additional staff to handle to handle that and Pikes Peak Regional Building is funded solely by permit fees. We don't receive any any income from uh, the communities that we serve so we're self-funding to increase the workload without increasing the bottom line. There's not room in the budget to do that. Now on the drawings that was approved this is a ramp and there's a ramp there where those stair stairs are but nobody inspected it right? Mm -hmm. So there's no way for me to get here. Oh look at this. They're, they're storing stuff. I would not be able to get it because they're storing stuff on the ramp. You see that? Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, that creates a, not just a, an unfriendly environment for people with disabilities, but it creates an unfriendly business environment because we literally are looking at suing hundreds of businesses because we can't get in the front door. All we want to do is, is be part of the community we pay taxes in, we work in, and we serve in. And many of us want to return to work. A very riveting and compelling story about what's going on right now here in Colorado Springs and El Paso County for ADA accessibility. So since this story, how widespread is the problem here in El Paso County? You've had the opportunity to drive around, look around, talk with Dave May and others in the disabled community. Yeah, I think the issue is, is very widespread and it's really unknown. I think the city, the county, regional building, this is not something that anyone is actually tracking. So no one really knows how many buildings, how many sidewalks are in, inaccessible or possibly uh, not complying with the ADA. What entity would make sure that it's ADA accessible? Well, the Department of Justice deals with ADA accessibility from the federal government, government perspective. So they're overseeing, for example, if you have a complaint, you can file it with them to say this is not a building that is ADA accessible. But it would be difficult for the DOJ to be everywhere in the country at the same time looking at all these businesses. Yeah, that's an issue that's come up a lot, this idea that there's no ADA police that the DOJ is sending out all across the country 
that it's, it's really difficult for them as a federal agency to, to oversee these issues in every city and every county in the U.S. What's in the works to make the code more accessible in El Paso County? Well, Roger Lovell, who we spoke with, said that uh, this is an ongoing discussion that they're having now. They are looking to update their regional building code. So this could potentially change in their next installment of the regional building code, that, that five-foot uh, area that they are inspecting. But uh, it's uncertain at this time, and it's really, as he said, up to the municipalities as well to direct regional building to, to change the code. All right, existing buildings, how can those owners make accommodations with, without going broke? Yeah, well, there are tax incentives and, and breaks that, that tax breaks that businesses can use from the federal government to, to help with ADA compliance, as well as uh, Pat Going, who we spoke with, also said that if business owners or builders are building these structures and making sure they're ADA compliant at the beginning, that it would only cost, in his estimation, about 1% to 2% more. So really, people say that, that that cost is worth it as long as you're not opening yourself up for a potential lawsuit down the line. And you've done the reporting, you've talked to Dave May and others in the disabled community since doing the legwork on this story. Do they see hope that Colorado Springs and El Paso County will be more ADA friendly in the future? Well, I think they have seen some improvements in the city and the county that for the first time last year, both hired full-time kind of comprehensive ADA coordinators to be overseeing these, this issue and others in the city in Colorado Springs and El Paso County. So I think people see hope there as well as they hope that there's more awareness around the issue that people who might not be disabled now but could in the future or have a family member who is. Maybe we'll see the world a little bit differently and see sidewalks that are cracked and see buildings that are inaccessible. So I think that there is hope on their end, um, but also there's a lot of frustration with, with the current situation and potentially I think they're weighing the idea of maybe filing lawsuits, maybe trying to have a stronger voice on this issue because they realize that it's just widespread across the city and county. And of course you, Stephen Hobbs, and the Gazette will continue to monitor this situation and watch as the ADA accessibility in El Paso County and in Colorado Springs continues to unfold. This has been a special assignment on the Gazette and Gazette.com, breaking down barriers. Thanks for watching. Read Stephen Hobbs' special report, Breaking Down Barriers, in the Gazette and on Gazette.com.